In each of these cases, what I am trying to find out is a pronumeral. So you can see here's the pronumeral down here, y, and here's the pronumeral up here, theta. So in the first case, I'm after a side. In the second case, I'm after an angle, okay? Let's have a look at this guy. Now, every time you look at some question like this, you should have this kind of framework in the back of your mind. It's sort of like you're putting that framework on top of here, okay? So the first thing you notice is you're after a side, and this is the angle that you've got. How do these two relate to each other in terms of their position? Well, 42 degrees is right next to the side you're after. It's right next to it. What's our technical word for that again? Adjacent. So I'm even going to label this A, D, J for adjacent. Okay. So I know that I'm going to use a trig ratio with adjacent in it. Have a look at the other side over here that I have, the other information I have access to. It's the, in this triangle, the hypotenuse. So I've got the adjacent, the hypotenuse. I think about my mnemonic and I'm like, which ratio is this? It's going to be adjacent, hypotenuse. This is going to be cos, isn't it, right? So I can write an equation now with cos in it that relates all the information I have in the question. Cos of 42 degrees. Not because of 42 degrees, though also because of 42 degrees. Is equal to adjacent on hypotenuse. Y on 87. You okay with that? I can rearrange a tiny bit to make y the subject. What will I do to both sides? I should multiply by 87. I'll put y on the left-hand side while I'm at it. And at this point, you need to then reach for your calculator. And um, take a moment to appreciate the fact that once upon a time, without these things around, you had to look up a book to find out what this was. And then you had to get a number, and you had to multiply that thing by hand. Because like I said, these things didn't exist. So back in the old times. Now, just a really quick note. Some of you have siblings um, who are older who've used your calculator, or maybe you've just lent it to someone. I need you to make sure up in the top, you can see this icon. It's very, very small. It's a little square with the letter D in it. Um, a small number of you, if you've lent a calculator to someone, might find it has the letter R. Hi, who are you looking for? OK, sure. Um, Georgia and Arian? Now I'd assume. Yeah. yeah. Could you go down to Ms. Bevan's office, please? Thank you. I would guess you'd go that way. Just be quiet, there's exams. Um, Arian, other way. Other way. Okay. So, have you all got. Can, does anyone not have this? Okay, if you don't have this, what you need to do is go to. Um, I'm pretty sure it's. Shift mode, set up, and then what you want to press is 3 for degrees. Okay. All right, now for the rest of you who had their calculator fine, you can go ahead and you can punch this in, and you will get a number out, 87 cos 42. So I have uh, 64 point, is this the same number as you? 64 point, now I'm going to encourage you, uh, especially in an exam, but the way that you get into the right habit for an exam is to do it now, um, to write as many decimal places as you can see there. Just, just write them all. 6535998 That's not where they end, but it's where your calculator stops. Okay? Now, the question will usually ask you for a particular level of accuracy. So on your next line, your last line, you provide whatever accuracy was asked of you. What was it? What does the question say? Uh, One? Okay. 64 point Seven. Wonderful. Okay, now just put your pens in and look up for a moment before we move on to the next question. What units, this is not a trick question, but what units is this question provided in? Like this is a distance I just found out. What are the units? Now, the question may actually say, does it say in like the top? It says, it says centimeters. But one of the wonderful things about trigonometry as an idea is that it's about position, position, um, relative to other things. So in fact, if this was say 87 kilometers rather than centimeters, this would be 64.7 kilometers rather than centimeters. And it doesn't matter how big, it could be inches, it could be nanometers, it could be anything. Trigonometry works regardless of size, that's one of the special things about it. 
Okay, so that is the measurement. You have been told it's centimeters for this particular question, but just pay attention to whatever units your question supplies. Yes. Yes, of course. All right. Now, just last, um, in terms of a question, I'll hold your hand with. Now we have a look at 2F. Similar kind of information, but instead of being asked to find a side, we're being asked to find an angle. Okay. So again, you think in the same terms. Have a look. Here's your angle. And then you get provided these two sides. What is their position in relation to theta? What's the 87? It's right on the other side. There you go. So I'm going to write opposite. 123. It's got to be the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So I write hypotenuse. And now you think what trig ratio relates the opposite and hypotenuse? It's sine. So I'm going to write an equation, including sine, that relates all of the pieces of information together. I'm going to say sine theta equals... 87 on 123. Okay. Now at this point, you need your calculator again. Um, I'm not going to go, this is a, a, an easy mistake to make, I'm not going to say sine of 87 123. Because actually I'm trying to get rid of a sine, not put one in. Do you see that? I don't want sine on the left hand side, I just want theta. So on your calculator, the way you're going to do that is you're going to press, I'm going to clear it, you're going to press shift. And then right above sign, you'll see this label on your, just on your calculator there. Okay? So that's what's going to appear on your screen. And then you're going to put in 87 on 123. So, just like before, um, I'm going to encourage you to write all the decimal places that you see. Like so. Now, um, again, they've asked us to do one decimal place of accuracy. So in this case, it would be 45 point. One decimal place. That's a zero. Is this enough to make the zero round up? And the answer is no. So therefore, I'm going to say, well, I didn't even say that. But anyway, 45, 45.0. And this is in degrees. Okay. Yeah, question. To the nearest? Ah, okay. So because we're finding an angle here, that's right, this is a whole different question. Okay? Uh, it's not normal to provide angles in decimal points. So if you still have the answer in your display, um, if you don't have the answer in display, put it back. If you still have the answer there, then you're going to look for the button uh, to the left of all of the trig buttons. The degrees, minutes, second button, which looks like this. This one here. That's the degrees, minutes, seconds button. Or some calculators even just have degrees, minutes, seconds in letters. Go ahead and press that. Okay. And then what my calculator display says is, I'll put this in another color. <clears throat> my calculator display says this. 45, 1, 1.3. Okay. Do you, does yours match? Does that look okay? All right. Now, this is really important. Put your pens down and look up for a second. Because you've got to know how to read this. You've got to know how to read this. We press the degrees, minutes, seconds button. So what you've got here are degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay? So therefore, I'd like you to label on your answer there degrees, minutes, seconds. Okay? We went to the nearest minute. How many seconds are there in a minute? There are 60 seconds in a minute. As for time, they are for angles. So how many seconds would you need to make your minutes round up? 60. Hmm. This is interesting, isn't it? So does this round up or down? It, it rounds up to four, doesn't it? Okay. And the reason why is because five is halfway. Yeah, five is halfway. So halfway for seconds would be 30. So if you had exactly 30 seconds, you would round that up. So that would look something like this. Uh, one minute and 30.0 seconds. Okay. Um, how many seconds is this? Not very many. Just one in a little bit. That's clearly not enough. So therefore, I can just say it's 45 degrees and one minute. Does that make sense? 
By the way, how many minutes in an hour? 60. And just as it is for time, it is for angles, there are 60 minutes in a degree. So just like here, if this was 45 degrees and 30 minutes, that would round up as well if we wanted to the nearest degree.